really easy for you. And I also want to talk a little bit about bacteria within the substrate, uh, whether you're using sand or soil, and just bacteria in general within your aquarium. And I'm not going to get too technical. Um, I've been reading about it, studying about it, and you don't have to get that crazy. I'll put some links in the description if you want to check out uh, this article I found from, uh, what is it? Let me see. Hold on. On my computer. Uh, Colorado State University. Anyways, number one seeker I would say to an amazing planet aquarium is having low KH, low TDS. You know, Amano would keep his tanks around 2 uh, KH. And most of us don't really have true KH. We have alkalinity. I buffer with potassium bicarbonate. And I keep mine around 3. Uh, the reason is, is just because high alkaline situations um, can make nutrients unavailable to plants. And even if you're dosing a lot, um, it's just so much easier for the plants and for just the whole environment to be acidic um, to just have a low KH. So I'm just going to keep it at that. Just have a low KH, have it about at 3. Um, you know, recommended is between 3 to 6. Uh, the second secret I would say for sure is uh, adequate filtration and flow. You looked at my flow video. You want to have adequate filtration, you want to have adequate flow. Look at my filtration and my flow video to understand more about what I'm saying. Adequate filtration when it comes to mechanical filtration, when it comes to biological, and when it comes to flow, and then you can have supplemental flow as well. Just helps spread the nutrients around, helps the microbial beds, everything like that. Um, the third secret, of course, is light. Plants, of course, first and foremost, are phototrophs. So you want to make light the limiting factor to the point where it doesn't induce algae growth and it doesn't impede plant growth. So that takes some time to get used to just experience if you're raising the lights up and down or if you're switching the intensity through a potentiometer or whatever uh, you may have. And so I'd say that's the third secret is you want to make light the limiting factor for optimum plant growth but of course not inducing too much algae. Uh, you can also of course reduce the photo period um, I tend not to do that because I like my tank to be on. Some people are like, oh, I've got this fancy tank. My lights are on for five hours. Well, that kind of sucks. I want my lights on for ten hours. And a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of the freaks out there, like me, your lights might turn off at ten, but then you're like, you know what? I want to check out my tank till midnight. I want to show it off to some friends, to a woman. I want to... Do whatever I do. Drink some alcohol. Maybe you don't drink. It doesn't matter. Maybe you self-medicate, whatever. Sometimes you're bored. You might leave the lights on till midnight. And you're like, yeah, that's a nice looking tank. Sit there, play some guitar, looking at your tank. Boom, then you shut the lights off. That can induce algae. Um, so maybe you raise the lights up a little bit more. Um, so I'd say, you know, that's the third. Fourth, um, for sure, fourth, let's get into number four. I would say is consistency. Now consistency is going to encompass a lot of things. Consistency with your lighting and with your temperature. Um, also with your uh, water changes and uh, with, with the filtration. So you want to put everything on a timer. Plants want consistency. Uh, the more consistent the environment for the plants and the bacteria. Oh there went my light. It's okay. I've got another one but my one light was dying. But anyways Consistency is good for plants and bacteria. Of course, they're just going to um, become used to their surroundings. It just makes them more efficient. They're not going to have swings in their environment. The more stable the environment, obviously, the more beneficial for the plants and the bacteria. It just stresses them out less. Same for the fish. Let's not forget about the fish and the shrimp. Um, so you want to be consistent with your husbandry. You have your lights on a timer. Have uh, your heater has a good thermostat. Make sure it's a consistent temperature and uh, trimming if you need to trim, uh, weekly maintenance, weekly water changes, weekly maintenance, no matter if they're 50% or 10%. You just want to have consistency, consistency with dosing, whether you're dosing a lot or a little. Um, one of the big secrets, maybe the only true magic bullet is consistency, just because it's going to create that environment which allows the plants and the bacteria and the fish to thrive. And it really does, it just makes it less stressful for them so then they can do their job. Um, and number five, number five, I don't even think I would say dosing necessarily. That can that can fit into the husbandry. Um, 
I'm kind of drawing a blank now for number five. I had number five. Um, I guess patience. Consistency is a little bit different than patience because uh, patience has to do with faith a lot of the times. And even a couple years ago when I was on YouTube, I would set up tanks and, you know, some of the tanks I've set up, obviously they haven't worked. I'll do the dry start method, then you never see the tank again, or I'll do this tank and you never see it again. Some of them work, but then I get bored with them and I take them down. I sell them. You know, I don't have time for them. I go through cycles. Sometimes I have time for tanks, sometimes I don't. And I would say patience is the fifth key to success. You know, these are the top five secrets to amazing planet aquariums. Uh, patience really is faith-based. You know, the simple faith analogy is you put a seed in the ground and you know it's going to grow. That's how these plants are. But, you know, you could say if you're a Christian, I guess, or whatever religion you are, it doesn't matter. You know, we a lot of people say, well, faith without works is dead or whatever, and you know, no matter if you're agnostic, atheist, religious, it doesn't matter. We just know, you know, you need to put some effort into it. So those four uh, top four secrets, that's the effort. And the fifth one is just being content, not worrying, don't have the fear, and just knowing that the tank will balance. Now let's talk about a little bit about bacteria. Of course, bacteria, what they're doing is they're decomposing organic matter in the soil. They're making humus. And humus, technically, humic shale or humic fulvic acids are a little bit different than just compost. Compost has humic acid in it, but humic acid is a very complex structure that most organisms can't break down. Um, it contains sugars and glutens and gums, um, you know, fats, waxes, uh, lignin, things like that. And over time, it can slowly release nutrients to the plants, and it can also retain nutrients. So the humus comes into existence through the bacteria and the fungi and just other things, you know, breaking it down, breaking fish waste, fish food, um, plant matter, which plant matter is going to have carbohydrates, proteins, you know, they break down into amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins, uh, fatty acids, things like that, of course. Um, and then the cofactors and coenzymes, of course, are minerals and vitamins. So... What that all means is the bacteria is breaking it down into that form, which makes it easier for the plants to assimilate. Of course, there's also the nitrogen cycle. We all know the nitrogen cycle. It can go from ammonia to nitrate. It can go from nitrate back to ammonia. It can go from um, uh, nitrogen gas to nitrate, from nitrate to nitrite back to nitrogen gas. You know, it can go, depending if it's aerobic bacteria or anaerobic bacteria. And so, of course, we know about the plants need nitrogen, so the bacteria, certain bacteria are going to, their autotrophs that are going to produce um, the ammonia or the nitrate for the plants, but the majority of them are heterotrophs and they're going to be eating and de you know decomposing uh, these different organic compounds, which if you're going to break down a protein into amino acids and stuff, you're going to release minerals and vitamins, and then when they get to a certain point, they become humic acid, fulvic acid, and over time, that those acids will help hold nutrients if you're dosing nutrients as well as releasing nutrients to the plants. So obviously my tank's not very old. I'm using sand. I'm not using soil. There's going to be some detritus, and I'm sure at some small percentage I have some true humic acid in the sand. But obviously there's not tons of nutrients in the sand, but obviously I have bacteria. I took a sample of some of my substrate, and you know I went to school into the microbiology lab, and I saw ciliates you know, flagellates, uh, euglenoids, I saw diatoms, I saw a bunch of different stuff. So there's a lot of stuff living on the plants, um, you know, fungi, biofilm, algae, whatever. So there's a lot of stuff living on the plants and in the soil or in the substrate, which is going to break down the fish waste, the uh, decaying plant matter, you know, and of course fish food. But I am dosing, but the whole point is I'm not really dosing that much. I'm barely dosing, guys. I haven't dosed for well over a week. I mean, how are all the plants still green? Well, you could say, well, you're growing easy plants. And that's true. I am growing easy plants. I'm doing one of the most low maintenance tanks you could ever do with other plants. If you want to have them have a certain shape, if you want a real bushy shape of stem plants, maybe you're going to need to dose a little bit more. Um, but overall, plants especially like these aren't using nearly as many nutrients as other plants. Of course, they're slow growing, everything like that. So that does come into play when it comes to a tank like this. But this tank has been low-tech for two months, and it was only low-tech, or it was only high-tech for one month. 
It's only three months old. If you remember, I set it up during the Christmas break, and even then it was low CO2 and low dosing, and the lights were at about 65% power, and I still had no soil. So one thing I think can help, and I do use it, it's not necessary, is uh, dosing um, organic compounds to your tank. I mean, I use the Aqua Vitro Envy. All this is is chlorella algae in a base of ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, which just keeps it from oxidizing, basically. But obviously, it's it's a plant. It's chlorella algae. It's it's carbohydrates, vitamins, you know, cofactors, whatever, amino acids building blocks, blocks of proteins, right? Polyunsaturated fatty acids. So it's just the plant breaking down. They say, well, it's for the plants. Well, the only way the plants are going to get this is by the bacteria breaking this down for the most part. You know, maybe, yeah, for the most part. So, I mean, because they're going to decompose it and then, you know, the plant will be able to take up the vitamin or the mineral or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so the whole point is this is actually a food supplement for the bacteria, and I really do think using something like this, you don't necessarily have to buy Envy. Maybe you could just even put a little chlorella algae into the water as long as the cells are cracked and it's already dead. I mean, you don't, you don't want to have like a green water outbreak, which maybe if you had live chlorella algae, you'd, you'd probably give your water like a green water outbreak. But anyways, that's why I always advocate for, you know, organically derived micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, and everything because... They're slowly released because this is being decomposed by the bacteria, which then release it, and it makes it easy for the plants to assimilate. It's just ionizing the minerals. They, they're cutting the molecules down back into their basic form, just into an, into an element, right? So it just makes it a lot easier, and I really think if you're going to use a sand substrate, um, maybe putting an organic um, you know, base within the substrate can help. You can put bio grow kind of stuff which is like you know kelp based powders seaweed based powders mixed with humic shale you can do that kind of stuff to help promote it but i didn't even do that you don't even necessarily need to do that but you can get um soil conditioners that have like soybean extracts with kelp meal with humic acid shale they might even have peat moss in them and they kind of all mix it together and it just really jump starts the t jump starts the tank but I didn't do any of that. I was just relying on the bacteria maturing. But I think the reason I do have pretty good luck with my tanks, ever since I started using this, I think it really did help out. And it is a food for the bacteria. Um, and as well, that's why Amano puts those additives into the tank. He's, he's putting bacteria on the base of the tank. And the other powders that he's adding are food for the bacteria. And then some of them are carbon, which the carbon, in a way, you know, he says it can help you know, take the turbidity down and colloidal particles out of the water substrate, but it's also going to hold some of the nutrients and just make them in close proximity for the bacteria. And another thing that bacteria do is they help keep the nutrients in close proximity to the plant roots, you know, the rhizosome um, or rhizobiome or whatever. So the bacteria are all around the plant roots and they're sitting there breaking down everything and it's just in close proximity to the plants. And the plants, you know, can sometimes offer them uh, sugars and things like that to keep them happy. Um, as well as just, you know, the detritus and other organics that they're breaking down. So that's basically it, guys. That's the top five secrets to Amazing Planet Aquariums and a little bit more about, you know, just the microbial beds and everything like that. And I'll just put an article in the video description. Um, once again, I love you guys. Thanks for subscribing. Let's keep it real. Let's keep going. We love this hobby, guys. Obviously, it's just awesome. It's an underrated hobby. Not a lot of people know about it, but hey, that's okay. Let's keep it that way. We're badasses. It's just it kicks ass. If people don't like the science and the art and everything, I don't know what they like. I like sports too. Don't even get me wrong. I could probably kick most of your asses at basketball, ping pong, tennis, whatever. I play a lot of sports. I like a lot of shit. I play guitar, whatever. You want to go play some b-ball? I'll freaking slam it on your ass. The thing is, thing is, we love science too. We love art, whatever. If people can't appreciate that, man, they're just stupid. So peace out. Until next time, keep your sleeves wet. Talk to you later.